Hey everybody, welcome to the Faith and Fandom Podcast. This is the Artist Alley Aftermath Edition for Geek Tacular Comic and Toy Show in Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, first off, I'm excited that this even is happening because I wasn't supposed to have another con for a month and uh, ended up going to this show spur of the moment. Uh, it's been a crazy season of trying to get things scheduled there's a lot been going on originally this weekend i was djing a high school prom and then that got moved and then i was helping run sound and lights and stuff for a sorority event and then that got canceled and by the time i uh had this weekend available uh i wasn't able to get into any shows um Fayetteville Comic Con was also this weekend, but I could not afford another Sunday off out of the ones that are already scheduled out for the year. And uh, they had it covered with all the other things that I do there. So I wasn't involved in Fayetteville. And I just couldn't do another two-day show even if I wanted to because I only am allowed five off per year uh, for Sunday. I'm only allowed five Sundays off per year to miss my church work in order to go do ministry at a con and I have to allow for the shows do give me the chance to do geek church to get the first swing so that means uh out the gate galaxy con richmond and galaxy con raleigh are gonna get two of my five sundays um, this year, Lexington Comic and Toy Show also allowed me to do a Comic Con or do a, a church service. Um, and I'm also adding one in August uh, at Smoky Mountain Fan Fest. They're also going to let me do a church service. So, you know, that plus Heroes and um, Captain's Comic and Toy Expo, I'm already over for my Sundays for the year. So I have to just be wise in it. Um, it was sad not to do my local show, but it be what it be. Um, I saw some great photos and I hope everybody that went to it had a good time. A few people checked in on me to make sure I was okay because I wasn't there. And I really appreciate that. Um, it's nice to be noticed of absence and it's nice to be missed in those capacities. But yeah, the show happened, uh, the Geektacular show I had heard about, and by the time, um, I, by the time I heard about the show and I applied for it, there was a waiting list, and realistically, waiting lists are polite ways of saying no in most circumstances. This wasn't. Um, Saturday night, I was coming back from, uh, or Friday night. Yeah, Friday night, I was coming back from doing something. Um, gosh, what was I doing? I was doing something north of Fayetteville. I don't know what I was doing. Um, it's it's bonkers, y'all. There's just so much going on. Um, but Friday night, I uh, got the phone call um, to go do this show. Oh, Friday night, I was helping my friend set up at Fayetteville Comic Con. That's what it was. Um, and I dropped off um, copies of Flockward and Can I Still Wear My Cape with Lyle Pollard and dropped a copy of uh, Flockward off with the Brothers Boyd um, so that Lyle could have some comics and stuff for him to sell at the show. And I went and got some ramen. Um, but they called me, Geektacular sent me a message friday night to see if i wanted to come off the waiting list and join the show and i technically uh didn't have anything i was required to do on saturday i had my daughters had a um dance competition in charlotte or on the other side of charlotte but they were staying overnight and i had to be there for church sunday morning so again it was just not something that was super functional so i said yes the only problem was saying yes is that because I wasn't planning on the show, I wasn't fully prepared for the show. But you know what? I was prepared enough, and it was okay. Um, I was grateful to be able to do it. So I said yes, and um, went to my casa and loaded up all of my con stuff and got ready. And um, 
because it's about a two and a half hour drive, I and I needed to get there about seven o'clock so I could get set up by nine forty-five. Um, I left right at uh, five thirty that morning and hit the road. And I've been listening to an audio book lately. Um, my local college library had a sale of audiobooks for a dollar and I've been listening to some short stories and things like that while I'm driving which has been nice and uh so just got up 5 30 in the morning <laughs> rolled out got two large cups of coffee and listened to my audiobook for two and a half hours until I got to the con I genuinely don't even remember anything crazy about the drive because I was listening to an audiobook and that honestly helped um make the drive not go by as bad I was 100% sleepy but it is what it is, and you go with that. Uh, got there, and this was at the Greenville Convention Center in Greenville, North Carolina. I've done a, a good handful of shows here, but technically this was the smallest show I've done in this venue because the space that the show is normally in was split in half, and there was a gun show on my right side of the building, and the Comic-Con was on the left side, and I genuinely had a mini panic attack when I rolled up to the parking lot and realized uh all the signs in the parking lot said gun show and i was like dear lord please don't let me have signed up to come sell nerdy bible studies at a gun show um but <laughs> it was divided off the the comic con was free and the gun show cost eight dollars so hopefully that helped point people in the right direction but got there um and set up and uh, first off i paid the uh, showrunner, um, because he didn't know me and I hadn't mailed anything in yet. And I paid the showrunner and he was genuinely shocked that I was here from, I was there from Lumberton when I drove past Fayetteville to get here and I could have done the Fayetteville show. I was like, it's just the scheduling thing, man. Um, but I was happy to be there and happy to be involved and it was nice. So, uh, set up and I'll say this and, let me make this bold and clear. There is a luxurious beauty to having an eight foot table. I'm talking the best stuff in the world is having an eight foot table. Cause I'm so used to cramming my whole menagerie of nerdy garbage, not garbage, but you know what I mean? I'm so used to cramming everything that I have into a six foot space where it's towering and like a, uh, unesthetic Jenga of nerdy things to have eight foot table to have that extra two feet. Ooh, we it's luxurious. I set my table up and this is honestly my favorite way to set my table up. Um, it gave me room for the shirts to be displayed without being too tall. Gave me room for all my stickers to be displayed. I was even able to lay out the, uh, the portfolio of original comic book pages for people to look at and uh it was neat it was genuinely neat and i was grateful for the opportunity uh it's set up i got set up and i didn't really even know who was on my right side because i know he was a comic book seller but he had one of those giant walls of comic books so i didn't even see who who it really was and we didn't really talk um the dude to my left was selling uh action figures um the guy across from me was selling action figures and the dude down from him was selling pokemon cards so everybody had a little bit of everything um but got set up and uh i started drawing just because um like I, if you've listened to podcasts recently with me uh with cons i've found that drawing uh helps relieve anxiety at shows but also that, you know, it makes good content to be able to sell and helps have good connecting moments, um, which this show definitely proved that. And I need to get more proactive on drawing as well. But um, a couple notes about the show experience overall. Um, and as I mentioned, some, you know, I, could, I appreciate the fact y'all listen. And that you're actually here for this because y'all will bring up stuff that I say. Like I got an email asking for a shirt specifically and someone was concerned that you know they wouldn't be able to get it because i said i was going to stop carrying shirts i don't like having shirts but by golly 
it's something that people really enjoy. And it's probably one of my best connecting tissue pieces to be able to have conversations with people. So I need to basically stop being a whiny baby about something that's actually successful and does well and just make sure I have more shirts. Um, uh, people wanted, uh, initially, you know, they wanted more of the Vader shirts than I had. And, you know, and some of the other ones, some, wanted some of the Batman ones, a TARDIS one. Uh, I had at least three different encounters of people wanting shirts that I didn't have the proper size for. And that is discouraging. You know, I, it made me realize, you know, this is something that people actually care about. I need to get better about it. So, um, this is going to be my reminder to go ahead and contact my t-shirt guy. Um, because I also wasn't prepared. I didn't have, um, books. I sold out of a lot of books at galaxy con Richmond. Uh, so I did not have any of book four. I did not have any of book five. I had one copy of faith and fandom junior, which did get sold. I had zero copies of that's what she said. And I was just running real slim on about everything else. So I need to do inventory this week so that I can, uh, order more books, but I'm gonna tell you ordering books and shirts in the same month hurts my soul of, um, hurts my soul when it comes to, uh, that, you know, I am grateful for our Patreon supporters that help making this stuff possible, but dang it, ordering, you know, hundreds of dollars of books and hundreds of dollars of shirts. is just like, makes me moderately nauseous. Um, but grateful for the opportunity going to be excited about that. Um, this also was the return of me having Pokemon cards to give away. Um, a lot of friends lately have given me Pokemon cards to give away to kids. Um, I was able to send a decent amount of Pokemon cards to Dallas. Um, and I, in my head, I'm saying Panda, but like, uh, I want to say his name wrong. It's the folks from Geek Devotions. Um, Dallas and Celeste. Yeah, Dallas Panda, Marshall Mora, and Celeste Mora. Yeah. Uh, was that right? I always, I know people by their ministries, not by their, you know, government names. Um, but uh, Dallas and uh, Celeste. Yeah, Celeste Mora. Dallas and Celeste Mora, who run Geek Devotions, I was able to send them. Uh, some of the Pokemon cards I had in excess, but even after that, um, I'd gotten some new ones. Some friends had given me some to give away and I was able to just bless some kids, uh, with Pokemon cards. And you know what? That was a big deal because I made some kids whole shows. And when a kid rolls a nat 20 to get 20 cards, it, it makes a big deal. And some, some kids had a really good, uh, show with that. I had an experience where a mom came up and told me that, uh, she reads, um, bite size with her family. Um, and that's that their family's, um, quiet time. And, you know, that's a couple shows in a row where people have told me that. And I didn't think bite size honestly was going to be that influential or that good of a thing when I made it. But people have really been clicking with it and expressed that it's been a good blessing for them. And I am incredibly grateful for that uh, with it. So thanks for being a part of that. And I'll, you know, in that note, I also needed to thank um, Radio Matt from LTN because a lot of the bite sizes were the radio segments that I do now bi-weekly. Um, put in print and he helped make all that possible with that. So grateful for radio Matt and those capacities, um, just help make things great. Uh, that was one thing. Um, and another cool thing was a young gentleman who has been in pictures in the book before. And, uh, like, uh, there's one picture of, uh, I want to say in book, seven or eight of a young man dressed as Captain America who came dressed as Captain America to galaxy con, but was wearing a faith and fandom bracelet. And I thought that was really cool. Um, it also makes me think maybe I should bring back bracelets. Uh, but this guy has always been really encouraging and, uh, 
has been a big blessing to me and uh, just in his interactions at the booth and everything. But I saw him coming around the corner because he was wearing one of my shirts. He was wearing the Tell Me What You Love shirt. And uh, he just walked up and said, hey, you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> and it was the reality as was I wasn't on their list of vendors or anything like that um, because it was a last minute thing. And, you know, I appreciate the fact that he knew I wasn't going to be there and he wore one of my shirts, you know, kind of like being the salt and light in that presence. And it was really cool. We had a good long conversation. We talked about uh, some different aspects of life and uh, he told me about a friend who was injured and he was looking through some sketches of stuff to get for his friend and didn't really find anything for his friend and asked, well, what does your friend love? And he said, Pikmin. So I said, just give me 10 minutes. And I did my best little uh, Pikmin sketch of Olimar with a few of the Pikmin. I wish I had taken a picture of it because I actually thought it turned out really good. Um, you know, and just get, you know, gave him with that and he got some stuff, but we also had conversations about, uh, I guess later in life autism diagnoses and what that's like. And, um, he, we were discussing that and I pointed him to the fact that he should, uh, go back and check out, uh, Carl's commentary from the geek church and galaxy con or sorry, Lexington comic and toy show, because at that con, um, a young man was sharing about his, uh, journey with autism and faith and, uh, some different stuff in those capacities. So it was neat to be able to, um, at least point someone in those directions and have those kind of conversations, but just overall a really encouraging thing. He also told me that he's writing a fictional novel that sounds like it's an allegory of, um, a young man who doesn't know if he's a werewolf or not. And he's looking for, at the evidence of it and kind of comparing it as an allegory for autism. So it's a really neat concept. And honestly, I'm genuinely looking forward to reading that. And, um, but he was a, just a really encouraging experience and, um, was grateful to be able to have it. Uh, the, uh, drawings honestly were a big kind of hit in terms of stuff. And, you know, one young lady came by and we, we freaked out over Homestar Runner because she was getting a Trogdor sketch. And it reminds me, I need to go ahead and write this down. There's some sketches I need to replenish. Um, uh, cause they're not prints, but you know, I, some of them really do track. I need another truck door. Um, I need another, I was trying to remember as it goes on, but, uh, Sinchi from Dun delicious and dungeon, um, which we talked about delicious and dungeon a lot. And again, I love that show. So flipping much It's doing so good. Um, it's my favorite anime right now. We just talked about stuff. We had good conversations and sketches. Um, I also sketched a spider punk and a brack from Space Ghost because somebody had a Space Ghost shirt. And I just had fun doing those things. I am genuinely sad. I had one long, long conversation with parents about Bluey. And I actually had a lot of Bluey conversations at this show. But I had a long conversation with parents about Bluey and um, some of the hidden stuff that was in the uh, sign episode. But one of the things that did kind of make me sad is that uh, after I watched the sign episode of Bluey, I did a little canvas painting slash print. So for the last, I don't ever know how many months, I've had these little sketch cards, sketchy bookmarks for a dollar. They're the size of a playing card or Pokemon card and they're sketch on them, they're a dollar. So now, in addition to that, I have canvases that are six inches by six inches, and those are five dollars. And so, the first one I did, or maybe the second one I did, I think the first one I did was Uncle Iro. And I've just been making them for fun, like in reactions to moments, like when Gambit passed away in X Men, I made one of him saying, Remember it. I did one of Uncle Iro with Lee's from the Vine. But uh, when at, there's a moment in the episode of Bluey, the sign where Bluey's just overwhelmed and she's sitting on her front porch with her headphones on listening to music. And I loved that moment. And so I drew that as a painting and it's the one I had like right there on my table and somebody bought it. And I was so sad <laughs> that it got bought. Um, 
in fact, it was the Captain America cosplayer um, that got the Pikmin thing that bought that. And I was just so sad. I did not want that one to go because I genuinely loved looking at it. Not loved looking at it because of my artwork. I loved looking at it because it made me smile that it existed and I enjoyed that moment in the show. But also, I hope it enjoys its new home. And now I have to paint other things. I'm trying to learn from the genius of Todd Turner and uh, start prepping for shows in advance. Like right now, he's posting the mosaics he's making for Heroes Con. And I'm going to be on top of that because there's a lot of stuff happening between now and Heroes Con. And it wouldn't hurt me to be better prepared. Um, this was not a massive show of people. This was not the biggest show I've ever attended. This was not the best promoted or any kind of crazy thing like that. But you know what? It was a really solid show on a logistical scale. Uh, it was $75 to set up a table, which is not, that's not bad for a one day show. Um, and guess what? I made $75 back, probably a little bit more. So outside of travel, you know, it was a good experience. Um, I did not go into the hole at a show and I got to say, that's nice to be able to say. So lower cost shows have lower risk. And, um, if I made $95 and paid for my gas and coffee, praise God, <laughs> cause listen, it's a good thing to be able to say that and be able to do that. Um, but it was a good show. Um, I found some cool stuff at one table. I talked to Sean Morse, who runs the Lumberton comic show. And we talked about, you know, giving that. And then as we were breaking down and getting ready, uh, there was um, a, the vendor beside me that had all the action figures. And Sean and I were talking about the possibilities of doing another Lumberton show and the fact that I work at a community college now and I have access to a lot of buildings and spaces. And so we just kind of chit-chatted about that. It was a good experience. I had a good time doing the show. I did a fallout piece um, while I was sitting there. I did some work for church. Um, but I had good conversations with people and good interactions, and it was not a high stress, high negativity, um, gross environment. It was nice. It was nice to be able to go and do that. Um, and to be able to meet some new people. Um, I ran into people I've met before at like the Greenville show, um, that I'm going to tell you guys this, um, never mind. I'm not going to tell you. I have one awkward Greenville related story, but it's from the past and, you know, I don't want to go into it. Um, but it was fun. Oh man. It was, yeah. Talk to me sometime. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, but no, it was just, it was a good experience. Um, same deal. Listen to my, I finished my audio book on the drive back. And so, uh, now, you know, I actually listened to some more music and enjoyed my time and, yeah, it was, it was a good experience. I, if I had an available time and date, I would absolutely do that show again. Um, it was, you know, people were saying, oh, it's not as busy as last year. I'm like, well, I don't know that cause I wasn't here, but I enjoyed what I saw. And, um, I will say that somebody, somebody asked me afterwards, like, where were the cosplay photos? And you know what? I didn't see a ton of cosplays or if there was cosplays, I didn't take pictures, um, which says there probably wasn't a lot of cosplay cause I usually do, but I enjoyed my time there. Short show, 10 to four, um, easy load in, easy load out, no fuss, no muss. Um, uh, there was definitely one guy who was unhappy. I was there. Um, he would come by and like eyeball the table and just like shaking his head, like the audacity. Um, but he never said anything ugly. Um, so I was like, I'll take it for what it is. It was not a bad experience. Uh, would absolutely do the show again. Uh, and looking forward, uh, looking forward to, uh, getting the chance to do some more shows coming up, uh, immediately next that I'm aware of is our Randolph County public library, um, comic con. Let me see if I can pull this up. Randolph County public library. Randolph County public library. Is this you? Um, do, do, 
do. That's so weird. That's Robson County Public Library. That's not the right one. I know where that is. Um, Randolph County Library. Is this you? I could be wrong. Nope, that's Georgia. Never mind. I'm not going to look this up right now. Um, but what I will tell you is this. My next show is going to be in um, Randolph County Public Libraries Con. And uh, it's going to be... Well, I found the site for it. Uh, yeah, Randolph County's Public Library Show. It is on... Uh, it's at the Ashboro Public Library... May 18th from 9 to 12. And then after that, um, I will be at Heroes Con for sure. There might be some other stuff before that. Um, Fayetteville, I've applied to their um, Nerd Market, which would be May 25th, um, I believe, May 24th. Um, I've applied to the Nerd Market there, so that would be the following week. Um, but between that, I've got uh, weddings and my birthday and um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff between now and then. But May is definitely coming. Heroes is coming up right after that on uh, June 14th through the 15th. And then I'm kind of in the mode of doing uh, camps, uh, being all over for that and yeah, so it's going to be all kind of around all over the place. And then we got Galaxy Con Raleigh. And after Galaxy Con Raleigh, we have Smoky Mountain Fan Fest. Um, and I need to follow up with um, Natsukashi Com. Natsukashi Com. Um, which will be a Comic Con in York, Pennsylvania. That's asked me to come and do Geek Church, so I got to follow up with that and um, check into it. But yeah, so that's stuff that's coming up. And before I bounce, I want to take a moment to um, thank our Patreon supporters, all of you that do what you do: uh, David Brooks, Jeff uh, Weimer, uh, JG, Colin Sproles, Jamie Montgomery, the Coleman family. Jonathan Herman, Ron Petit, Tesh Norton, Scott Ward, Alicia Glenn, Candace Davis, Jay Sheed, Jason Crutchfield, Mike Perna, Todd Turner, John Jacobs, Zach Harris, Caleb Grimm, who just hit me up today to tell me he's at a Judah and the Lion concert and he's getting me stuff. Yay! Um, Jeanette Skaggs, Jason Bullock, Christina Ray, Sarah Lewis, Patrick Gale, Reba Rebecca Godlove, and Adam Davis. Thank you all for... Um, doing what you do and supporting the way you support you help make all of the things possible from merch to travel to site hosting everything else with that if you're interested in uh supporting you can go over to faith and fandom.com or patreons.com slash faith and fandom i believe is that correct patreon.com slash faith and fandom is that correct that is correct. Patreon.com slash Faith and Fandom. And also, uh, if you just want to check out stuff, you can head over to faithandfandom.org or faithandfandom.podbean.com uh, to find different things from our podcasts, our websites. There's over 170 geeky devotionals that are on there and available for you to read. Um, but thanks for taking the time to listen, and I look forward to seeing you at a con soon, and I hope you have a great day. 